Hey yo, hey yo, it's Vaughn doing and what's the deal with NBA 2K22? Like, I know we say it's the same game every year, and I know folks complain about it every year, and you can't expect any, you know, dramatic changes when it comes to basketball because the game doesn't change like that year in and year out. But it's 2K, and here we are another year. But what's surprising this year is how there isn't any gameplay yet. Like, they're almost a month out from release, not even under a month from release, and we haven't seen any gameplay yet. Which is odd, even for 2K standards, and I gotta be consistent because I can't get on one publisher or developer for not showing us much or giving us much information before their launch, three months before their launch, and I don't do the same with NBA 2K, even though they're a AAA game, and we know it's gonna be just around the same as NBA 2K21 on current gen and next gen, you would like to see some gameplay. And the other odd thing is, they've done, well they've been releasing some ratings for players and certain attributes, and one notable admission from the top five or three point shooters was Damian Lillard, which is odd. And they have Joe Harris up there still after his terrible playoff performance compared to Dame's great playoff performance. And I know they both still have made it early exits out of the playoffs, but based off what we we're watching, you would say, well, yeah, Damian Lillard is a better three point shooter than Joe Harris. It's really that simple. But not according to 2K. And another thing they've done that is weird. Is they have a four-way tie between their best four players, Steph Curry, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Kevin Durant, and LeBron James, all at 96. They used to be a lot more frivolous with their attributes and their ratings because they used to give out 100s and 99s. Like they gave Shaq a 100, they gave Garnett a 100, I believe. And yeah, they give out a lot more 99s, 98s, 97s. But now, you know, the highest overall players, they're all 96s. Now this could give them room to adjust throughout the year, which, I mean, they're not going to have much room to work with to begin with because, again, they're like some of the best players in the league. Like, what, they're going to go on one to two overalls, or they may go down one? Like, they don't have much room to adjust with already being that those are, you know, some of the best players in the league. So, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what they're doing, but here we are, a four-way tie for the best four players. And maybe they'll make the proper adjustments throughout the season and you know they'll adjust them accordingly and they'll have a player take the top spot, you know, single handedly. But until then we have a four way tie. Well let me make my predictions and get my gameplay thoughts on wax before the game actually comes out. And that's because Suga has an issue when it comes to balancing, because one, they don't do a very good job of balancing or doing very much balancing in these games life cycles to begin with. But then in the next game, the next product, they tend to go, you know, overboard in one direction and they overcompensate for uh, gameplay mistakes and errors they had while developing the game. And you can see this with multiple games and multiple builds. They'll have slashing being, you know, very weak one year and it's very strong the next year. And the same thing applies to post scores and how this year they can't score at all. The last couple of years they were extremely broken and uh, overpowered. And now, you know, you got seven foot post scores on six foot guards and they're missing open layups consistently with high ratings and high badges. So they over they overcompensate a lot and they go full tilt in one direction and then the other for balancing. And it's just not good. You know, they can do a gradual shift, but they don't I'm like eh, it's either it's going to be broken or it's not going to work at all. And that's how it is when it comes to 2K. Now, I would have to say they did a good job with shooting this year, but on current gen, uh, there's a lot of issues with shooting, like people just don't like it. And when it came to me on current gen, like shooting off the dribble felt more consistent than catch and shoot jumpers, which is weird. And I had a high three point rating, because I do every year. But that's what I noticed when I was shooting the ball in the current gen. But it's a lot better on next gen, and they actually properly adjusted the fades on next gen because they were really easy to abuse and use early in the game and that was adjusting now they're a lot better you don't have to well players aren't abusing them every shot and you know you're more selective with them and I have to say that's a good example of balancing it but that's few and far in between with 2k because every other thing you know they just go full tilt one direction and they overcompensate the next year and I, I'm going to believe they're going to do this with defense on perimeter and in the interior because interior defense was terrible because you had Hall of Fame room protectors constantly getting dunked on by uh, short slashers or you would have three people in the paint and a slasher would run in there. Well, not a slasher, any build would run in there and they would get a posterizer on all three people. It happens way too often and consistently. So, yeah, they're going to overcompensate in that area. And I believe the rim protection and terror defense will be very strong. I'm not entirely too sure about perimeter defense, but I think it'll be a lot better 
and it may have a chance to be broken this year as well because with the way it was last year people may you know spend more effort on defense spend more attributes on defense and it may lead to more uh, broken animations on defense but reason why I'm not entirely too sure about perimeter defense is with their dribble moves and how those animations be pulling you in one direction want to go the other and when it comes from the defense it wasn't the most responsive and fluid so even if it works in theory like clamps is good you know pickpocket is good if you're not able to move and read the you know the offensive player correctly it's not going to be worth that much so we will just have to wait and see and another thing when it comes to fluidity of the game is the dribble moves so not the most responsive like i do things and it's not moving the way i want to and they have to clean that up as well. They also have to clean up the animations. And speaking of animations, apparently they're going to be releasing them in a seasonal format, which is weird, I guess. But maybe they're doing more motion capture for new animations. I have no idea. They've had the same animations for quite a while now. But if it's new animations, they're releasing them periodically. That's okay. But it could just be them releasing broken animations, you know, as the seasons progress and as the meta changes. So. Not entirely too sure about that. We'll just have to wait and see again. But yeah, those are my predictions. I'm going to overcompensate on the defensive end when it comes to interior defense and maybe perimeter defense. I don't think they'll do much adjustments on the offensive side of the ball. Maybe they'll tone down some of the dribble moves a bit. And hopefully shooting stays in the same spot. I think it's in a really good spot right now. Maybe I'll make another shooting video for NBA 2K22. I did enjoy this game thoroughly actually. And I use this background for the NBA videos I made throughout the year. But in other news, Shakari Richardson, she got smoked in a 100 meter dash. It was very shocking to me because I thought she would at least, you know, get fourth, have a chance at podium, but she did not at all. It was a bad start, and Jamaicans are really good in big races, and it showed uh, today. It really did. But without the way, ladies and gentlemen, y'all stay safe, and I'm out.